Hello and welcome to Cartoonist Kayfabe. My name is Jim Rugg. I'm Ed Piscor. Before we dive into today's comics, I want to bring attention that we are traveling in October. October 6th through the 9th, you can find us in Columbus at CXC. Come out, say hello. We'll be doing panels there, selling books and talking comics like always. The end of the month, October 28th to the 30th, we'll be at the Baltimore Comic Con, the place where we first conceived of this uh, this cartoonist kayfabe channel. And in the middle of the month, October 22nd, you can catch me at Jacksonville Public Library for their comic and zine festival. Kayfabe-tober, just about upon us. And these are our official drawing prompts for the month. Uh, you can do a freeze frame here. I'm sure we'll share this on our social media. If you guys do the Kayfabe-tober prompts, tag us in your whenever you post them on social media so that we can share them, we can see them, and uh, other Kayfabers can find you as well. You hashtag us on Instagram and you at us on uh, Twitter, and that will guarantee we, we, we see it. Perfect. And without further ado, let's dive into today's comic, and that is The Punisher, The End by Garth Ennis and Richard Corbin. Where do you begin with this? Richard Corbin, one of my favorite cartoonists, I think one of the great original cartoonists of all time, Garth Ennis, an incredible run on The Punisher, amongst many uh, titles that he's written well. And uh, this is kind of, they were doing this gimmick, they did a few of their characters, Marvel characters, with this end idea, whatever the final story is, but I don't know if they did any to this level. I mean, an all-star team with this character, and rereading this this week... I read this years ago when I picked up this issue. It was good. I remember it fondly. Rereading it, it is like next level stuff. This is <laughs> exceptional. Fantastic. A I, dark I, story. I didn't know that this comic existed. I had no idea that Garth Ennis and Richard Corbin had a collaboration like this. This is your first time reading it this week. It was my first time oh, reading man. it. It was such a pleasure. I can't believe it. The, 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 the final statement that Garth Ennis brings to the table. I, I mean... Fuck it. Spoilers. The Punisher is the last man on Earth. <laughs> it's not just the end for him. It's the end of humanity, and he's the last motherfucker standing. That's perfect. I feel like he would be that guy. Not only that, he's the reason that there are no more people uh, in some ways. Yeah. <laughs> this is also mid-90s. Like, like, no, it's like no, early no. 2000s. 2004. It's earlier than I thought. 2004. Mm -hmm. Corbin had come over, I guess, um, Axel Alonso brought him from DC Comics when Axel Alonso, the editor, came over. This is under Joe Quesada as editor-in-chief, and they were bringing in some of these really interesting artists, people that I would not associate with Marvel, and Corbin may be the top of that list in terms of, you think of his history as independent, as underground, as European, all these things, so unlikely when he shows up at Marvel and does several books for them in this under this uh, regime. I don't, uh, I don't know any of those other The End stories. Like I, I don't know any uh, other... I don't know that I read any other ones, but I think one is a Stan Lee Fantastic Four with John Romita Jr., I think. Okay. So, you know, like, I think they were trying to go for it and put some good good creators on those books, but I don't know the whole rundown of so them. That's your time period, the Thomas Jane Punisher. Saw that in the theater on day one. It blows my mind. Like, all of everything from about, like, 2000 till now, you could tell me it was three years ago or seven years ago or... 15 years ago. I, coll I collected Garth Ennis Punisher. Yeah. Like, like, I got the first 12, 12 issue joint mm -hmm. with Steve Dillon. Sure. Detective Soap. It's it's a lot of the material in here. Like, the, the Russian where Kevin Nash plays the yes. guy. Like, that's all that's all that first 12 issues. And that's Marvel Knights before Marvel Max. Uh, I was just organizing some but stuff. But after, after the uh, Starlin writes in Punisher... Yeah, Marvel Knights series. Exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. The bad one. <laughs> Dude, Joe Quesada had nothing to say when, when I brought that up, man. Uh... <laughs> And I have three years, like I had it on my pull list, like three years of a Marvel Max series that Ennis wrote with like a lot of cool people, like uh, Tom Mandrake would mm -hmm. pop in there. That doesn't scratch the surface. I think he did almost a hundred of, of, of that particular run. And there's other shit. Like there's another uh, Steve Dillon that I have a couple of issues of. So doesn't it make total sense? Like half, after reading Preacher how much Punisher fits, like, a Garth Ennis, I don't know, man, misanthropic worldview or something. Sure, beyond the preacher, like, a hitman, you know, like, like it's, uh, it's like, you know, rooting hitman in, in, a, in a Punisher mindset. It's the dark the part guns. of humanity. Yeah, totally. So, we start out in uh, Sing Sing Prison. I love that it's just soon. Right. Because <laughs> it feels like this would work now if they released this book yesterday, a new comic book day. I think this would still work. A smart piece on the writer's 
point of view, don't 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 date it. Yeah, brilliant. Don't, don't you're not Nostradamus. It's a great opener too, because all we see is we're at the prison, and there's somebody saying your orders are to shoot the prisoners, all of them. Yeah, and you can see the sky is kind of a weird orange color. Right, but you could just imagine that's mood, you know, or or you know, it's arid. Yes, hot desert, wherever fuck Sing Sing is. I don't know. Maybe it's a desert ish place. And we have uh, you know cut to the inside, and we're getting the warden and you know one of his I guess top employees there trying to put together what's happening and what's happening is nuclear war yeah and uh you can see man pulling out the bottle from the drawer still fresh uh after 9-11 uh there's a lot of language in there about you know they you know it was no big deal when the americans went here looking for terrorists or there for terrorists but when you go to china looking for terrorists and you try to like impose your own imperialism or whatever over there the chinese ain't gonna sit by and just like let that happen so that's the impetus it's, it's not it's not russia it's 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 nuclear war with china this guy name is charlie and it says it means there's going to be a war charlie and i and i think of that uk book charlie's war is uh probably a reference to that i see i would think uh ennis is is familiar with that and, and you know not an accident that that's in there and uh what else are you going to do? There's no Drink time to get home guns. to uh, your family. You've got about an hour before this is going to go off, and this is what you're seeing. Yeah. The last sunset. Yeah, and so many of these guys are like, you know, fuck my family. Like, fuck my cunt of a wife. Let's well, get to the bomb shelter. <laughs> so now we cut down to going through the cell block and executing these prisoners. Man, it's 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 grim to think of, but maybe that's merciful. If uh, what's the alternative? Radiation yeah. poison in your cell. Sure, sure, and it's like that's not sold as the inspiration. It's like if shit goes down, like you don't want these maniacs to be the last because these are the dudes that are gonna fucking you know be the Mad Max guys. Like they're gonna be the pillagers and shit. And we learn here there's a bomb shelter for the prison staff underneath this prison. Yeah, so. If you didn't go home to your family, maybe you can live this one out. Right. Which also, like, why would you? And they're down to their last prisoner, who is basically in his own wing. Yeah. So they're going to go off him and then head into their uh, safe safety in the bomb shelter. And it is a Punisher comic, so this could go only one way. Exercise ultimate caution as they're heading in here. And... Uh, <laughs> They kind of describe, you know, exposition, we often criticize all the exposition, but what they're describing is who this guy is, this last prisoner that they've got to execute, and how, like, oh, yeah, he just killed he just killed criminals until he got here, and then he just, it was, like, the buffet for him of just killing all these people, and they're rattling off, like, how many people he killed his first month and stuff. Did they say, like, like um, 30,000, 30,000 over 40, 30 or 40 years <laughs> inside of prison and stuff? Yeah, he's out there killing and killing and killing. The uh, dialogue, like, Ennis is such a good dialogue writer. So when he has exposition to give, it's it's a pleasure to me. You know, I like the rhythm of his, his wordplay is, is really perfect. Yeah, it doesn't feel like he's just writing to put words into the exactly. uh, into, into panels. Because you see a lot of these silent panels. And he does silent panels really well. Like, the lead up to this is, is pretty hardcore. Uh, but they do go through and talk about, like, 36 assholes in the morgue. In, at the end of his first month, everybody's trying to take him down. So, like, he's basically just butchering everybody. And here we go, man. What's up? The electricity goes out as they're, like, opening his cell door. Not a good scene. And the amazing thing is we cut now to, like, a year later. Yes. And it's done, like, really clever the way this works, you know, because you hear people just kind of losing their shit and scared and did not go the way they planned. But I'll, I'll reveal this. Frank Castle made it into that bomb shelter. Yes. I, I, and I think there's some implication that, that the cell was kind of down there. Like, those those guys earlier, like, they heard of the bomb shelter. But I think that there's wor wording here where, like, that is where the the cell was. So he just had to kind of hang tight. Yeah, it's, it, it is a setup of that sort where he is off on his own because of how dangerous he is to everybody else. And it shows them descending the stairs to get to that point so yeah yeah for sure um it's fun too because as the story unfolds there is some back and forth this is a fellow prisoner that has made it through i think these are the only two to emerge two after a year but they weren't the only two that went into the bomb shelter right and so as they go along like you get some backstories about different people who freaked out after a certain amount of time in there or did something stupid and uh these are the last guys to uh to survive and after a year 
they've got some information, or at least Frank Castle has some information that he wants to run down before uh, before he expires. And now look at our contrast from that first sunset on page one to this is our skies at night, almost like fire in the sky. It looks like cracked eggs or something, just like uh, shells of stuff getting cracked. With with that, these clouds contain energy within. Yeah, I don't know how you draw radioactive post apocalyptic skies, but Corbin knows how. Yeah, there you have it, man. And Old Man Castle looks pretty good too. It's not. It's not really a Richard Corbin color color palette that we're seeing, mm-hmm. but if the color feels informed, uh, it feels smart, you know. And I do wonder if he provided some kind of guide. Um, I just because it's certainly at this era, like I, I just don't put too much credit to to like your colorists all the time. I'm trying to think of who colored it. Was it Jose Villarubios? Lee Luridge, L- great colorist. Yeah, great yeah. colorist. Yeah, very experienced color. So it's possible, you know, who knows? If Corbin had ideas, I'm sure he shared them. And, and if not, you've got a very good colorist uh, in charge. And also, like, once you get into this, it's mostly, like, just death. You know, I was reading this stuff. They're talking about the radiation will be, like, a thousand years before it gets to the point that you can really come out in here. So they are being exposed to this. They're not going to live very long walking out here. And as they go along, they talk about how, like, you don't see any life. There's not a yeah. bug or a rat or a leaf. There is nothing alive right. on, on this on the surface of this world. So there's your note, Lee. You know, like color it accordingly. It is pure death. And and for for those of us who are far enough removed from you know mi- middle school science class or whatever, like the nuclear half life is still way longer than human life when this shit shit goes down. Which I never kind of understand, like how Hiroshima and Nagasaki, like people yeah, are there I chilling. About I, like that. I don't know how that works. Uh, but these guys, you know, he sold it earlier that, that we're out too early, like, but there's nothing we could do. We're filling effects. And then just as the pages go, you're just going to see more skin slipping off and yeah. boils. Yeah. Cor- and Corbin going and his shit. stuff. Yeah. It's fun. Great page though. Ennis is so good at telling this story because as they're gone, you see this prisoner saying goodbye, sing, sing, you know, never, not how I thought I'd be leaving this place, which able to create that little bit of it's not nostalgia but it is sort of like i don't know leaving you know you can't go home again right like somehow there is there's almost like you're missing things what you went into this horrible prison that you started at you'd take that now on this day you would take that original uh heading into sing sing on your way in right but he's going to new york and it's based on some guy named teach who told them some information about what he might find there and so it's the end of the world, man. What else are you going to do? It goes, goes with uh, Castle. You get to see, like, everybody fleeing, right? All the broke down cars. So important. Like, this is the stuff that they get right, that Stephen King got right in the stand. And almost every other You're the Last Man on Earth story never has this. Because it would be that. You wouldn't be having clear sailing on roads. There's a million cars there. You're like, you're kind of getting nowhere, probably. You're going to have to drive off road. A bunch because there's so much stuff in the way. It's not like everybody just dematerializes and stuff. Punisher narrating himself. I'm I'm sad that it's not Dear Dear War Journal. Yeah, as he uh, recaps what brought him to this point. But and he's just a grizzled old cuss, you know, a Clint Eastwood kind of character, modern day Clint Eastwood kind of character. And we get a little bit of background on how they know about what they're doing. Yeah, and this is from Teach, who 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 was like uh some sort of like engineer type fella. How great is this for like your background scene? It it begins snowing soot, which, you know, is just like this radiated yeah. ashes coming down. So they take shelter in this bus and you see like a bunch of really school kids, right? Yeah. Like like dead school kids. And and it talks about like there's something about basically them killing themselves and you see bullet holes in the middle of the skulls yeah a school bus full of assisted suicides we settle down to spend the night it reminds me of the road yeah it's just bleak yeah like, absolutely. there is there is no ray of sunshine when they say there's no life there's no hope yeah that's that's rondo hatton right there you know that's the mm-hmm. creeper yeah yeah and you're right this gets into the chinese uh the, the build-up of what this war was that red blood Sticks out like a sore thumb. Yeah, what is this? It's the radiation poison is uh, starting to take its toll. Eat something. Why? <laughs> what difference does it make? Please yourself. Yeah. 
And uh, he's like, why bother? You know, why, why even keep going? And he says, there's still work to be done, which is the Punisher being the Punisher. Yes. <laughs> you mean killing, right? It's got That's them what right. There for. And he does end up eating some of the, some of the warmed up beans. Oh man, that lighting, man. <clears throat> it's. Could you even do this comic if you didn't get Richard Corbin to come on board? I know, right? I can't imagine it with anyone else. No. You know, like his cartooning of things like buildings, it perfectly, perfectly suits this. It does. And look, they've arrived at New York City, but before we arrive there, let me take this opportunity to say that we are working cartoonists, and if you want to support cartoonist kayfabe, the way to do it is to buy our comics. Hulk Grand Design Monster Madness is my latest. It is in stores now, 80 pages total, retelling the 60-year history of the Incredible Hulk. And we've got a uh, oversized collection that you can pre-order now at your local comic shop, online, or wherever you buy books. So pick up Hulk Grand Design today or pre-order it today. Street Angel Deadliest Girl Live, my latest from Image Comics, is back in print after being out of print for a while. So you can pick that up wherever you get books or comics. Ed Piscor's Red Room Trigger Warnings. The second season in Red Room is in stores now. Wherever books are sold, you can pick that one up. Same with Antisocial Network. These are both completely self-contained, so start with whichever one you find at your local comic shop and go from there. Let's go back to New York City. And uh, I, I love Corbin so much. And it's stuff like this. You see these shadows of the black clouds that are glowing behind them, and you see the ruins. I mean... This feels like driving into into New York, you know, like like I'm used to seeing all the tall buildings, all the beautiful stuff, and it's just brown and gray. And for all my criticism of brown and gray as your color palette, perfect. You came to the right book for that. Neo New York, Akira has arrived, and you know this is, I believe, the prisoner saying the other prisoner, not Castle, saying, "Always knew I'd make the trip someday." Yeah, yeah sure, because New York is such a it's such a Frank Castle place. Yeah, and it, and it feels like there are these these human moments that Garth Ennis puts in there. You know, like, why do you have a guy traveling with Castle? You, Castle doesn't need somebody else to get to New York City from that prison. No. But you have him here because it allows for a bunch of storytelling. It does, and and, and it's not just... Human, Fra human storytelling. Yeah, and it's not just Frank Castle. You, you, it's not the road where you, where you, or you, where you got to talk to a dog or whatever. I am legend. You had to talk to your pup all day. This is where they're talking about there's nothing alive here. Yeah. All their travel from Sing Sing to New York. I think Sing Sing's in New York. It they is, mentioned yeah. Albany early on. Yeah. Uh, all that travel, and there's no sign of life. And, I mean, they sell it. That water looks disgusting. Oh, you're toast, man. You're done. And you can see, speaking of water, just stuff is oozing now out of Castle's face. It's kind of zen also in that he just keeps going. Yeah. Like, he has a mission, and it's just to kill, and... uh as long as he's alive, he's going to continue working on that mission. I feel like there's a certain uh, monk-like comic book attitude of that, where it's you're drawing a page today. Right. Tomorrow you're going to do the same thing, and the day after that, and eventually you get a book. And they're going underground into this bunker, and this is what that inmate had told Castle about. is like, there are these strategic bunkers. These are the people who maybe are responsible for these wars. It's it's still early for that, I feel like. Well, they're getting into, you know, you can see they're getting into, like, barriers, right? They have yeah. codes to get into some of these right. uh, these places that are beyond just, like, we're hiding under buildings. But this is something that is a little bit more high-tech, a little bit more organized and planned. Yep. And so they get inside. I don't know if this is, like, a decant decontaminant kind of thing spraying here. Yeah. Yeah, like a degosser. Or if it's a knockout gas, like somebody has, has made it past the first barrier of entry because the next thing we do is go from blackness to castle waking up and you can see the fuzziness, again, nice drawing to uh, illustrate like things coming into focus and it's dudes in radiation suits trying to figure out like, all right, man, who are you? How'd you get here? How do you know about this place? A big misstep on uh, these Jeff Bezos, Elon Musk characters, man, to, to allow these guys, like just step on their fucking heads, man. They're going to require more resources. You know, they're going to be eating your food. Big misstep to bring him into the mix. Yeah, and you get a little bit more of this revelation from from our guy who's working here, who's like, things haven't been too good here. Some people aren't uh, coping as well as we thought they might. We've had suicides. We've had murders. So nobody's taking any chances, and that's what you see, our guards that are watching these uh, couple new humans, a couple of the last humans on Earth. Right. All of these, you know, like we've got them here. Great color palette, you know, very anemic jaundice green yellow puke light yeah yeah you're right and castle gets to be castle for a minute and we get a little bit of red once again yeah 
emotion. And look at the stuff. Like, he's now has, like, growths and stuff on him. He, he's a walking piece of steak. You yeah. know, that's just it's just red meat. And for nearly Freddy Krueger. Calls those uh, two guards in here now. You know, holds that first dude hostage. Is like, I'm going to cut your suit open, call them in. And, of course, once they come in, he cuts their suits open anyway and maybe some uh, blood vessels in the process. But guess what? He's in. Oh, yeah. At this point, you're right about them making a mistake. And he's got weaponry. Absolutely. <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> Just flat, dude. It's like, <laughs> it's like a fucking uh, Looney Tunes. The bulk of him, too, is like the old man. Yeah. Reminds me a little bit of Dark Knight. You know, that idea of, like, you're getting older and heavier. Uh-huh. And you feel it here. Like, there's a real weight underneath Castle, and he's loaded for bear. This is Frank. It's it's a wonder he doesn't, like, do the skull and, and radioactive blood or something on his shirt. <laughs> but, I mean, it's him back one last moment of glory, you know? Yeah. This is really that... So many action movies are this. The yeah. guy coming out of retirement for one last job, and that's what you're seeing here, is Punisher coming out of prison for one last job and just cutting these dudes down. And by the way, there's a lot of resemblance here to like Third Reich kind of uh, yeah. costuming and stuff, especially in this panel. Yeah, to it's me. almost a Hitler guy right there. Yeah, I think having that mustache up front, the shaved heads. Yeah, the symbology, on, on like, you know, the insignias and things. And you can see this is your narration of how, why these men are guilty. Yes. You know, like... They made puppets out of presidents and started wars for profit. Eventually, this is where you get to. Inevitably. <laughs> he, Picture he, worth a thousand words? He looks like these, like, I think Chaken, like mutant world, right? Like, like mm -hmm. gorilla look, looking characters. Like, it looks like Simeon. Yeah, it reminds me of, like, Jack Palance. Yeah. Like, his face kind of stretched back. All that shit, like, like, the, like the Clint Eastwood. Uh, certainly, like, that got the Jack Palance square head, like like a catcher's mitt. I would love to know, like, what did Ennis write in the script? Because to have the earth and lit up as, like, these radioactive spots or whatever in the background behind him, I mean, he's an angel of death here in all his glory. They pushed the planet's luck too far. Genius. Strong stuff. <laughs> and yet, one more, uh, you know, one more piece to go through to get to like the very last group of people back here, the, the people that are really pulling the strings behind everything, time's up. These are your captains of industry. Like, these are your Jeff Bezos. I mean, you, you nuclear war happens. You think Jeff Bezos ain't, ain't taking his little rocket ship and going into outer space and, and chilling for the rest of his, his days? Uh, you know, it's this is your Elon Musk, your Bill Gates are in here. Yeah, it's... Your Vanderbilts, like like all the Alex Jones enemies and shit, you know, <laughs> like all your Bilderbergs and shit. That's these dudes. Yeah, yeah, man, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> all your conspiracy guys. Everybody, everybody. I, I wish that there were names for like all these dudes that would correlate to conspiracy theory ideas. <laughs> if it was a nice day and it wasn't nuclear war, they might be at uh, Bohemian Grove. That's right. That's right. There should be pit, owls pit, or pit, something pissing, painted on the walls, pissing this on is uh, how this trees video together. Gets canceled, by yeah, the way. Yeah, this yeah, last yeah. thirty seconds, we yeah, just yeah, banned yeah, from totally. social media. <laughs> if the string goes down, there's things at play. <laughs> that's right. Uh, Man, Frank Castle looks so good in all of this stuff. He looks like a psycho. When we get a close-up, his eyes look like they're about to break open. They look open. cracked. Yes, yes. It's amazing. And the, and the guy that he's drug along, he has no idea what to think either. I, how could you? And You're all near death at this point. And it was established a bit earlier that that guy said that he was in prison for some, for some bullshit. You know, some like little piddly nonsense. Yeah. And, you know, Castle kept him around for a reason. Hey, here is some info about, like, the D-Block. The guy who built this place was in the hospital whenever the war started, which was next to D-Block where they built the shelter. So, yeah, you the pieces all fit. Like, it's yeah. a really tightly woven story. Things are very considered how this fits together. I remember a story of a, a Hiroshima survivor that said that uh, people's teeth, like, their teeth became, um, like, crayons. Like, they didn't crack. They just kind of, like... Like reach would reshape, mm. real soft and stuff, and 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 that's what I was thinking about there. That looks like very malleable. Was that in the manga? Tooth matter in Barefoot Gen? No, it was it was a li live action correspond like like you know some learning yeah. channel thing or something. I would love to think that this is somehow you know like like talking to Barefoot uh, uh, Gen. I was gonna say there were sequences, but we did Max Immortal, and that that had maybe yeah of Barefoot yeah Gen. yeah yeah reading through Max Immortal this week and and then reading this. There's definitely some, some strange connections to be drawn between the two. Um, 
pretty fun as they like lay out their side of it of like, wait, don't shoot us yet. You know, he, he basically tells his first part of how he got here and why they're going to die. And, uh, and they're like, hang on a minute. And they talk about the other shelters and how like we've lost touch with, you know, these different shelters. Like we may literally be the last human beings on earth. Right. And we've got means here to kind of like keep the human race going. We got some jizz. We got some eggs. It's noteworthy because we haven't seen one woman in this like last group uh, either. So those are maybe test tubes that they think they can keep the human race going with. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they say they don't say women. No, no. Like we're just going to be jerking into petri dishes. But nevertheless, the idea is we're literally the last human beings alive. And and you know these guys that can cons- they're like to, in order to get to that position, you know you're almost a deity. Like you're a cult leader. And you're in a position to uh, sell water to whales and sell fire in hell. And that's what this face is, man. He's trying to sell fire to a, the devil. And you see the result of that right there. It's great. Keeps that rictus smile. Yeah. You know, he's Dr. Evil, dude. He totally is. I thought of the Dr. <laughs> Evil reference. And post-Dr. Evil, by the way. So not yeah. an accident if he bears some similarity. How grim is that for a panel Those little man. dots boy. great lighting and yeah. his ears half ripped off yeah yeah it's a that's a vet expert salesman they could sell anything to anyone except me and he looks like he's smiling as he goes through there and gets his uh punishment now you know there are two guys left on the planet potentially yeah, and we have some questions. So how does a small-time con artist get sent to D-Block? Yeah, because our guy you know, mentioned what got him there and to be locked up with people so violent. And, and, and where Frank Castle was, was, was the D-Block was um, you know, pedophiles. The worst of the worst. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like people who would get ripped apart by right. the gen pop. Yeah, and it turns out he was uh, an arsonist that ended up killing some kids whenever he burned a house next to a school. Right. So, a child killer. Yes. And just look, look, dude, like, his body position here, like, that's a golem. That's a Frankenstein's monster. It is Frankenstein's monster. Wow, that's a good call. Especially considering Corbin, you know, a guy who's long association with monsters. Just that very rigid posture, you know, like, he's just... It's all hands. By the way, it's Michael Myers and the Boogeyman. Totally. In the panel, two panels before that. Yeah, absolutely. The shape... And he's kind of right. You got to be shitting me. I'm going to die in 45 minutes anyway. Horrible radiation poisoning death. But you're going to do this? What's another one? Incredible. It's such a, like, I think world building is one of the things comics does great. And I don't always, you don't see it in a lot of comics. You know, it's this great skill. And I feel like this moment of like, the idea of being the last person on earth after this just horrible i mean being the last person on earth like there's no good way that you got to that point yeah and this kind of captures it it feels like lonely and hopeless it, it's hell it's literally a vision of hell yes and i mean it looks like he's on fire right there and just walking and chilling yeah totally at peace with it what an issue this is one issue. You know how we read these issues and it's like, yeah, it doesn't give you too much. You kind of need to read four or five, six issues to get everything out of it. This is the argument. This is why you look at those issues with a critical eye because, like, you can do a lot in one issue. This isn't, Absolutely. I don't even think it's oversized. No, I don't think so. Yeah, maybe but if it is a couple of pages. Yeah. You know, not much at all, man. And, and you're right. You know, like, this could, this could easily be, you know, two trade paperbacks worth of story where we see him, you know, intermingling with, like, you know, just nonsense. And that, that is the unfortunate thing. A lot of writers uh, in the mainstream, they come up with a cool hook, cool idea, and they fucking milk it. You know, rather than like the cool stuff about old Kirby comics or whatever, is he's just unstoppable imagination, has so many ideas, will be so giving with every issue, every time. Just be so giving. And what I get from a lot of mainstream comics when I try to give them a shot I try to do due diligence. I could tell you're withholding and you're trying to stretch stretch an idea. It's fucked up. It makes me wonder too, like, this is a really well done comic in my opinion. Yeah. High level craft. Does Ennis pitch it to Corbin? Because if you're Corbin, you know, that dude's not doing everything. Yeah. You know, like is he looking and going, Yeah, I can do something with this, this fits, or this is really great story it's or something, question. you know what I mean? It's a good question. Because man. I don't 
th these are the exceptions to the rule for me whenever you go it's assembly line we've got yeah. a different colorist different letter all the you know bunch of people bunch of hands on this pages and yet you can make good work that way yeah it can be done when we were uh digging with fifa um i saw some t uh, tangled webs and i yes. think it's tangled webs um or maybe it's its own mini series, but there's a there's a Garth Ennis, John McRae, Spider Man comic, three issues. That's going to be a video sooner than later, man. And I want to see what a Spider Man is like. I've never read that, so yeah. I'd be curious to check that out. Scooped them up a dollar a piece, man. You good to go? I am. K Fabers, like, follow, subscribe to the YouTube channel, hit the bell. We'll notify you when new vids are out there. Jim, what do you got? I have Hulk Grand Design Monster Madness is in comic shops now. It's 80 pages together of two oversized issues retelling the 60-year history of the Incredible Hulk. You can pick that up wherever you get comic books. You can also pre-order the Hulk Grand Design Oversized Treasury Edition. That is the big 70s, uh, you know, treasury size collection with 40 extra pages. Some really cool stuff in there and probably 50 or so revisions to the uh, original content in that one. So that'll be out in January. Pre-order that now wherever books are uh, sold and Street Angel Deadliest Girl Alive from Image Comics is back in comic shops now so pick that up wherever you get books and join me on patreon.com slash Jim Rugg where you can see a lot more of my comics and art. Red Room Trigger Warnings is in stores right now, the book collection uh, that contains the 2022 season of Red Room Comics. Every story in that book is self-contained thus making the Trigger Warnings book self-contained so you see this on a rack, scoop it up give it a shot, you don't need a whole bunch of history with Red Room to completely enjoy that comic and if blood and guts is your thing there is the, the anti-social network is out there it's it's uh it's a uh, halloween season Jimmy. you know what some it's... of the books that we review i think lead better into the books we're selling ourselves <laughs> punisher the end into red room a lot of people haven't seen the optic Symp nerve video yet. i can't wait till that one comes out <laughs> uh murder on the dark web for fun and profit is the name of the game i have a link tree in the description below uh so that you could get the comics if, if it's banned in your comic shop or something my patreon i'm serializing a new round of, of red room comics and uh this last red room book will probably probably be the last red room book that the one that i'm working on now probably be the last one uh for at least a while if i don't want to um unless i want to re-explore the uh the universe but i'm working on new shit also so i'm going to be serializing that on patreon before anybody gets to see it uh, also, so link in uh, the link tree in the description below. What else do you have out there, Jimmy? Subscribe to the Cartoonist KFAB newsletter at the links below this video. You can also find Cartoonist KFAB t shirts, merchandise, fanny packs, all that good stuff from our spread shop at the links below this video. It's another great way to support the Cartoonist KFAB channel. Given those marching orders, Jimmy will be on our way. Read more comics.